Okay, so just before Christmas, I got the Oculus Quest VR2, and uh, it's an incredible piece of kit. And uh, I was reading through some guides on how to capture the screen footage. Uh, I can actually use my iPhone now, but one of the guides suggested using Screen Copy, which is uh, a piece of software which captures from an Android phone uh, and displays it on your desktop. And uh, Twister OS actually comes with it built in. But if I switch on my headset, You'll be able to see the lights come on. There you go. So if I start up my Android on the desktop here, you can see what I can see through my VR headset. And I can look around and I can interact. So if I put my hands up, I can move around and I can control things. So I can select apps. I could select YouTube VR and that comes up. But as you can see, the display isn't brilliant on the screen. So what you can do also and I'll switch over to screen capture for this bit. I can change what it captures. So if I go to this GitHub, uh, so Oculus pass through recording, there is uh, various different scripts that you can put in to record different screens. Uh, and you can change what you're capturing and it's specific for the Oculus. So the one that I figured was the best one for me for capturing for videos, uh, I've already put in here. So it's this one here, crop 1832, 1920. Uh, and what this does is just one screen, uh, and I just think it looks better. So if I full screen that, and then I pop my headset on, so I'm in YouTube at the moment. What can I do? If I, in fact, I can probably type for me. L E E. This isn't the best. This isn't the best way of uh, typing in. Does it come up with that? Oh, it still doesn't come up. There you go. Lee PSP video HDR perfect, and I can play a video. You can see my hands in front of it. Oh, and I can skip the advert if it gives me the option. See how big the screen looks? To me, it looks like I'm watching about a 90 inch screen uh, through the VR goggles. Oh, pinch, pinch and drag to move the screen. Oh yeah, so I can grab that and I can move it from left to right. But anyway, let's pause that. How do I pause that? Like that. It's, such, it's so clever, you can see my hands on the screen. And uh, you've even got a menu here uh, where you can access various different things on the menu. It is, it's just so clever. Anyway, let's show more about an Android phone going through it because I realize not as many people have got the VR. So here's my Samsung Galaxy S8 with uh, lots of screen burn. If I go closely, you can see the keyboard is embedded on the screen, um, but that doesn't show up on this. So if I pop the USB-C in, and go to my Android on the screen. There's my device, so I can change it with the touch screen, but let's go into screen capture and I'll control it with mouse and keyboard, because you can actually change through the apps on this as well. And it's super responsive. Uh, you can move it out of the way. You can uh, open up, say something like a web browser as well. It doesn't seem to make that much of a difference on the resources. So if I do a search for Hot UK Deals, uh, you can see that works absolutely fine. Um, but also, if I switch to a screen, switch to YouTube, oh, I've got a survey, look. Uh, so, the PSP video, oh, there you go, HDR. Let's do the same video as I was using just now. Click on that. The sound currently is coming out of the phone, but I could easily send it to my Bluetooth speaker because obviously it's, a, it's an Android phone. They're really good for that. So if I pop my screen into landscape mode, there we go, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I've got video playing, uh, and obviously it's independent from what would play on here. So if I was to do YouTube on here, and go to my channel and play my latest video. So I plugged in another monitor. This is my 14 inch Ymaxit touchscreen monitor, which doesn't seem to like uh, the dual display setup. I probably need to do some sort of configuration to get the touchscreen working again. But I just wanted to see how it worked with this. So if I call up the My Android app, double click on that, and you can see that it's come up on this screen. So then if I drag it over to the other screen, we've got plenty of room to have all sorts of things running. So let's drag this one back over to here and just get files say up on this screen as well. And if we drag over to this screen, you can see that we've still got access to 
say for instance YouTube, I don't know why I'm double tapping on the Android device. So if I plug in my old LG G3 from 2014 with micro USB, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, USB connection allow. And we need to turn on USB debugging. So if we go into settings, developer options. So this is weird because it's grayed out, but if I unplug this and then enable it, now it's on. Let's just see what happens when I plug that back in. Yeah, and allow. Yeah, I think that'll work. And let's call up the My Android. Oh, and it's come up with another message on here. Allow USB debugging. Always allow from this computer and OK. And let's try the My Android app again. And we're in. So let's switch over to screen capture so I can show this a bit better. So mouse and keyboards have the same effect on this phone as well. So even though it's an older phone, it's still working fine. Call up the apps, close that down, uh, call up the web browser. And if I tap in here and I do say BBC Sport, you can see the mouse and the keyboard are working absolutely fine on it. Everything is as it should. And if I put it into landscape mode, yeah, that works. Back into portrait, that works as well. Uh, what happens if I try and access the camera, see if that works properly. So if I lift this up. Yeah, so there's my Pi. So you could have uh, a video mode uh, pointing out of your window if you wanted uh, on this with a long USB cable and you can keep an eye on something outside whilst you're on your computer. So that'd be quite a nice use for this. And if you want to install this into another operating system, as I say, this comes in Twister OS all pre-installed, all ready to go. Uh, if you open up PyApps, if you haven't got it, they've got a separate video on how to install PyApps, but it's definitely worth looking at. Uh, so if we click on that, and if you do a search for Android, it's not called Screen Copy on here, uh, it's called Android Buddy, which has a load of different things in it. So if we double click on that. So it might not work with every operating system on the Pi 4, so it's worth a try in your operating system of choice. It will definitely work with Raspberry Pi OS. I'm sure it'll work with MX Linux because that's based on Raspberry Pi OS. But uh, yeah, I hope all this helps. I'm very impressed with the program. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.